After a few years of running my video production company out of my home office, I finally moved into my very own studio space downtown. Now with that move comes the need for me to design and furnish an all new office where I'll be spending the majority of my time. This is a tour of that office and I hope you enjoy. One of my main goals when designing this office space was to keep comfort at the forefront. I spend a minimum of eight hours a day here, and while my old office was cozy and comfortable, I wanted to make sure that I carried that over into this new space. This meant decorating the space how I want it, and not how I think would get more upvotes on Reddit or likes on social media. While sharing your space is fun, it should never be the end goal. So just like I said in my last office tour, that's something you wanna keep in mind when you're designing your office space or your home office, whatever it is, your setup. Design it for you, not for someone else. For those of you who have seen my previous office tour, you're gonna to notice a huge change and that is the desk. Now I'm extremely picky when it comes to desks as I feel that it's the most important part of an office. And while I love the old crate and barrel table that I used, which I still have at home, I wanted to go with something a little bit smaller but also a desk that would promote healthier habits and also last me a long time. That being said, I chose to go with the Ergonoffice Sway Desk. Now this is a sit-stand desk which promotes healthier habits as well as proper posture. Like I said before, I'm in this office for several hours a day and even though I'm walking back and forth between the gear locker, the studio, the kitchen or the bathroom all day, it's still not healthy to sit in the chair for long periods of time. But thanks to the Ergonoffice Sway Desk, I simply hit the programmable control panel that's oh so cleanly built into the top and the desk rises to my preset height and then back down when I wanna sit again. The gorgeous solid wood walnut desktop looks amazing in person and really warms up the space. The desktop has an optional single grommet in the rear center to make routing cables from a keyboard or my Blackmagic control panel a breeze. On the underside of the desk, all of my cables are routed into a cable management rack from a Miso. Staying organized is a big part of my day and I do this by routinely cleaning up my desk space and filing important paperwork into the neat filing cabinet from Ergon Office. The neat filing cabinet, which is in the walnut finish, matches my Sway standing desk nicely, and the soft closed drawers are a really nice touch as well. I've also customized my Sway standing desk a bit by adding a storage rack from Oevio underneath the desk on the right side. This is where I place three 10 terabyte external hard drives from G Drive, as well as any loose objects like my planner, or whatever book I'm reading at the moment. For additional storage, I've added the optional walnut drawer, which simply attaches to the bottom of the Ergon Office Sway Desk. Now for when I'm not standing at the Sway Desk, I wanted to go with an office chair that I knew would last me a very long time, but also be very comfortable. That being said, I brought my Herman Miller Embody Chair from home. This is by far the most comfortable office chair I've ever sat in, and thanks to Herman Miller's amazing warranty, should anything happen to it, it'll be around for a long while. Since this office is not carpeted like my previous one, I made a small modification to the chair. I added these roller blade caster wheels from Lifelong and they help to keep the floor from getting scratched up and helps the chair to move around the office a little bit smoother. Now, if you've seen my previous office tour, you know that one of my biggest wants was to upgrade my PC. Now, unfortunately, due to the graphics card and processor shortages, I had to be a bit patient, but I do think that the patience has definitely paid off. Housing the PC is the Corsair 5000D Tempered Glass Edition case. I love that almost the entire case is tempered glass. The tinted glass allows me to peek inside and see the internals and to see the lighting effects, but at the same time, it's not over the top and it's not too bright. At the heart of the PC is the AMD Ryzen 5950X on an Asus ROG Strix X570 motherboard. The processor is being cooled by the NZXT Kraken Z73. And while I'm sure that an air cooler could have gotten the job done a lot cheaper, I just couldn't resist seeing my logo animation playing inside of my PC. 
For the memory, I went with 64 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro, and for the graphics card is the powerful EVGA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti, which provides the system with a ton of GPU firepower to edit 6K footage in DaVinci Resolve. For my main display, I am now using the BenQ SW270C 27-inch monitor. The standout feature of the BenQ monitor is its amazing color accuracy, and if you are doing any sort of color grading, you know that color accuracy is paramount. The BenQ is a hardware calibrated monitor with 99% Adobe RGB color space, and it's one of, if not, the most color accurate monitors that you can buy in this price range. For my secondary display, I have a Dell S2721 gaming monitor. Now I chose the Dell for its solid specs and its overall great price. However, at some point I would like to have a matching BenQ next to it. On top of my main display, I have a BenQ monitor light. Now, I'll admit I was very much on the fence about monitor lights, and I honestly dismissed them as a bit of a fad, but after BenQ sent me this light to try, I realized that when sitting in a dark office at night with just a monitor for your light source, it could become really straining on your eyes. So having the BenQ monitor light above my main display has helped to ease a bit of eye strain when working long hours. I do wish that I could lower the brightness of the monitor light a little bit more, but overall, I think that it is a very good addition to anyone who is working long hours in a dark room. Holding up both monitors are a pair of monitor arms from Ergon Office. I loved how quick and easy it was to set these monitor mounts up, plus they have a track for cable management, allowing me to keep things nice and clean. For my keyboard and mouse, I'm still using the same Razer Lancehead wireless mouse and Black Widow Elite keyboard from my previous setup. Underneath my keyboard is a medium wool desk pad from Grovemade. I'm a huge fan of the clean look that the smaller desk pad provides, and it doesn't cover up the majority of the gorgeous walnut desk. Staying organized on a daily basis means being able to plan out my day, and for this I use a new planner system called the High Performance Habits Planner. The High Performance Planner not only helps keep my day on task, but it also helps to keep my head in the right space by giving me daily, weekly, and monthly mindset sections to fill out. For quick notes when on the phone with a client or watching a course on YouTube, or just jotting down anything that I don't need to put into the High Performance Habits Planner, I use this black coated aluminum notepad from Grovemade. And of course, you know the Muji gel pens are being used. They're my absolute favorite pens of all time. I'm a bit OCD when it comes to pens. So anytime that the Muji pens come back in stock on Amazon, I quickly order up as many as I possibly can. Or if I'm in New York City, I stop by the Muji store and pick up a bunch. Another accessory from Grovemade is the Walnut MagSafe dock for my iPhone. My phone is charged practically all day now, and it lets me keep a quick glance on incoming messages and notification. Plus, it matches the desk very nicely with its walnut finish. Making their way over from my old office are the Yamaha HS8 studio monitors and subwoofer. They're connected to the PC via the Audient Evo 8 USB-C audio interface. For times when I need to toss on headphones, I use the legendary Sennheiser HD 650s. When the Sennheisers aren't in use, I simply store them on this really nice walnut headphone stand from Grovemade. After working in the old home office for a few years, I learned a couple of things, and in particular, I learned that in this new space, not only did I want it to be a functional workspace, but I also wanted it to be a space to kick back and relax when I wanted to get away from the computer. Now, the old space was a 10 by 10 room, and it did have some bigger furniture, so I didn't have any room whatsoever to create a lounge area, and that's what I've done with this new space. Behind my desk, I've set up a leather lounge chair from Crate and Barrel that I got in the scratch and dent section for a flat out amazing deal. Next to it is a Project 62 storage cabinet and a floor lamp from Target. Now this has turned into a nice space that I can use to read books, articles, comics, and drink my coffee when I need a break. For added storage, I brought along the Crate and Barrel Pilsen shelf from my old office. On the shelf is where I keep all of my books, a few knickknacks, and a Sonos Play 3 speaker for when I wanna to listen to a little music while I relax. Another goal that I had in mind when designing this office space was to pay extra attention to the lighting. Now, this office does not get a lot of natural light and it only has one small window that the sun only comes through later in the day, so, like I said, I needed to be very aware of how I placed my lighting, and I did that with a few different methods. To provide a nice soft backlight against the wall, I went with the Philips Hue Gradient Light Strip along the back side of the desk. 
Now I like this light strip a bit more than the regular Philips Hue light strips due to the fact that I could choose up to three different colors for the different zones of the light strip and it also has a bit more diffusion than the standard strips. On my desk to the left is a simple LED table lamp from Home Goods that I have plugged into a Philips Hue smart plug underneath my desk. To use as an accent light, I added a Signy floor lamp also from Philips Hue. The Signy lets me choose between a wide range of colors to add a splash of color to the room and also lets me choose from various different preset scenes. Not only does it provide some nice lighting options, but I also think it matches very nicely with the desk lamp. As I mentioned earlier, I have a floor lamp from Target in my lounge area, but for the bulb, instead of a standard light bulb, I went with the A19 Smart Bulb from Philips Hue, which allows me to dim the light from the Philips Hue app. Tying all the lighting together is the Philips Hue wall control. With the push of one button, the wall control switch allows me to turn on or off all the office lights when coming in for the day. Now my final goal when designing this office space was to keep and bring over some of the personality that I had in my old office space. And some of you may know already that I film and photograph cars for a living, but I'm also a huge motorsports fan, and in particular, Formula One. So I wanted to introduce some of that into this new space. And I also brought over some of the older knickknacks and decorative items that I had in the previous space. To decorate the walls, I went with various different Formula One prints, like this limited edition McLaren Golf livery print from Automobilist, a Red Bull filming day livery print from Ricardo Prints, and these ultra clean F1 prints from OMAC Design. Coming over from my old office is the Crate and Barrel three-tier Beckett shelf. Now, not much has changed from before, and even though I did keep a few items at home, I kept the shelf decorated with things I enjoy, or things that make me feel good. Whether my favorite comic books, a baseball card from my dad who passed away last year, keepsakes from my son, I keep the shelf as a reminder of things that make me happy and proud and overall feeling positive. So there it is guys, that wraps up the new office tour. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and also go back and watch the previous office tour so you could let me know in the comments below which space you like more, the new or the old. Also, if this is what you're into, you like these tours, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the upcoming full studio tour, which includes the YouTube studio, the gear locker and the lounge and the lobby. And hopefully I'll see you guys there. Until next time, take care.